because I accidentally pressed it. Let's do this then, guys. We... There we go. <laughs> For a moment, I thought my uh, scoreboard was broken, and I realized I just pressed the wrong button. Guys, let's do this. To the bottom right-hand side of the map, our blue Protoss player. This is kind of interesting. We've got a European, an American, and a Korean in the top three. Will our finals be EU versus Korea? Will we see that Gumiho Nib rematch? Or will it be our European player to come on through and to challenge the Korean for the title of Penthouse Party 2? Can the German win the German Cup? Let's find out! It is showtime to the lower right hand side of Belgia Vestige. Top left of this PvP. The yellow Protoss representing Ting, of course. I mean. What a player to pick up. I mean, that must be one of the pickups of 2016. Alongside Bjorn being picked up by Team Expert. Probably one of the pickups of 2016 that's still running strong today. Ting Neeb to the top left hand side. I mean, he's done so much in the past year. It truly is crazy. You know what's actually, uh, what's actually fantastic? We haven't actually casted PvP, like, at all in this tournament, I don't think. Like, how, when, when was the last time we casted PvP? Did we cast a PvP this tournament? I don't think we did. There was Showtime Strange, which was done by not by us. We didn't do Showtime Strange. I don't think we've cast like any PvP in the last few days. So this is going to be pretty fun. This is going to be pretty different. Let's see what happens. Let's see how it's going to go down as we have to the top left hand side. Neep. Sorry, yeah, I have double gates. That's what I was going to say. We're not doing intros, Wardy. We're doing build orders now. Intros, build orders. Talk nonsense, game over, GG's, intros, something sort of again. Yeah, that's what we, that goes, that's what goes through my head, but we got caught up on the step. I mean, PvP and two gates apiece are generally pretty much preferential in most openings. Sometimes, I think through the best five we'll probably see at least some time, maybe one player not going for double gate. We'll uh, keep our eyes out for that. For now, two gates apiece, and we are going to see double adept against double stalker. So setting this up and looking to see how that is going to go. Montian coming in with the $20 donation. Thank you very much. Let me read this out quickly. No message. Just the twenty dollars. Gonna get some SDI hearts in the chat. Some love, please, for our donator. Thank you very much. Appreciate the support. As always, has been a big support of the channel the last few days. Thank you very much, dude. Appreciate it. Last few days, last month or two, actually. Thank you very much, man. So yeah, two adepts against two stalkers have slightly different kind of benefits and so on. Um, the Adepts can generally dive in. Did we miss something here? No, nothing lost. The Adepts actually got cancelled by Nibi, went into Stalkers instead. Okay, then we don't have to talk about Adepts versus Stalkers. It's just Stalker and Stalker for now. And, uh, we did just see kind of a Twilight Council dropping down from Showtime. His next is a little bit slower because he was obviously building up for some fast attack. He's going to throw a, a pile onto the left side as well. We'll see how this is, uh, how this is going to go. This is the lower bracket final, guys, so Neeb just getting knocked out of the winner bracket finals the last, you know, a few moments ago. And now he's in the lower bracket finals again. If he wins this, he could get that rematch against Gumiho. If he loses, he'll be out, and it's going to be showtime getting his chance to slay a Korean here. And to hold them off, hold the line. Stalker's up to right, we'll take this watchtower, and we're going to see this Stalker and Neeb poking his way through this pylon. Pokety poke. Interesting, I'm not sure what Showtime is looking to use this pylon for. Maybe just further Stalker warp ins, as he is going to be aggressive with Blink. He actually outnumbers Neeb right here, and he is going to pick up one Stalker already. This Stalker, he knows, is out of position as well. It's a little bit of a guessing game as to where it's going to go, but he's just going to play the kind of safer route, which is to just push up here. Sentries will look for a force field, perhaps, to try and keep this safe. Another Stalker down, though, and this is just Showtime continue pressure. He actually keeps the Stalker alive a few more moments now. Force fields come down. This Stalker will come around the side to escape the, for uh, to escape the overcharge. And with Showtime going into Blink, well, this is getting a little bit scary. Neeba's lost a lot already, and Immortal now on the way out from this Robo, which will be a key part of this defense. With Blink available, there is so many ways that Showtime can maybe move through this. Another Overcharge immediately just utilized here. Keep those Stalkers pinned back and stop Showtime from taking any further advantages at this point against these Gateway units, which are just outnumbered for Neeb, unfortunately. Stalker's still seeing what they can do, looking to push forwards now. The Immortal is about to finish. He's actually just going to target down the Pylon to stop further overcharges. Now he's actually going to go for a Sentry. Pushes that army back momentarily. Now the Pylon does drop, though, and there's no other Pylon here just yet. There's the Immortal. We'll get a good shot initially. Pops the barrier. That's really nice. The single Stalker peeling away to pop the barrier. 
making it more engageable, but I think too many of these stalkers are low on health to realistically jump on top of the immortal and go for the dive, which is looking to kind of clean this out, so. And again, the stalker's just going to keep on pushing forwards. I mean, that barrier is immortal is off cooldown for a few more seconds. Can Showtime hit it? Well, the pylon is back up here, and again, I think the overcharge will make it a bit too difficult. Nice use of the blink to make sure he picks up that kill at least. And still, so far, very efficient trades out of Showtime. Look at that Eunice Lost tab. Four Stalkers and a Sentry in favor of himself. Now, as we do see, the couple of Adepts shading through here. Obviously, will not commit, considering he just walked past all of the Stalkers. That would not be a very pretty way to end things. Again, these Stalkers looking to see what they can get up to. One Stalker going down. You can see an overcharge popped, and again, Stalkers getting pushed back here right away. Still this forge just building him in the back from Showtime as well, looking to kind of continue on in his tech path. I mean, he's already gone into the Robo of his own. Need going to be a little bit fast on the forge and the plus one, but obviously Showtime with the map control can take that slightly faster third next as well. So he's going to throw this down, and again, these stalkers of Showtime looking to see what he can get up to. Mortal will turn, fight. Quick little shot there to deal a little bit of damage. And again, Neeb still pushing forwards, looking to see what else he can do. The stalker's going to start just blinking away once again. A few adepts are on the left side. And it's going to be Showtime, the first player to attack past the kind of just pure Robo facility and in towards that Robo Bay. Blink now finishing from Neeb as well. So the map control kind of era of this game is getting towards an end of the era of the game where kind of Showtime holds the map control, sorry. Obviously now Neeb has a bit more pressure available to him on the map. He's going to come over here, get rid of this pile, and bring his immortals as well, because I think he's aware that he is down on the Stalk account. So brings the immortals just to make sure Hallucinated Phoenix will look to try and scout, and does not just go straight down to the south side, where it would have just ran into Stalks and died. He'll come around the left, and obviously so far, because of the lack of map control, Neep has seen nothing. He hasn't even seen a blue structure this game, apart from, I guess, this pylon. <sighs> here I go, lying to you all again. He hasn't seen a blue structure this game. He just killed one. We'll see the Nexus now finishing up at the third, and as he goes in towards the main, he'll not see anything too surprising. Maybe the Robo Bay being finished? Not really. He's got his own Robo Bay finishing, so... These guys pretty much just matching each other, structure for structure at this point. Although Showtime actually yet to start his Robo Bay usage, and there is first disruptor on the way out. And Neeb can be a little bit faster on the Robo facility number two. Actually, Neeb with a little bit of a uh, worker lead, but trailing in terms of the army supplies. So as Showtime brings his own immortals across the map with the sentries as well. He will be looking for an attack here. As he pushes forwards, he'll be able to force field this sort of area to keep the units of Neeb pinned back. And this could be a kill on the third Nexus. So here we go. Let's see how this is going to go. Immediately going to hit the force fields. Uh, hit the uh, pylon here. Get rid of the potential overcharge. Those force fields are keeping the immortals at bay like we mentioned. Maybe needs a couple more now along this direction. Because again, I don't know if he wants to straight up fight. He actually loses his own immortal. Uh, as counter force fields come in from Neeb. Kills off a few probes. Doesn't get the Nexus in the end. Obviously Neeb being able to blink down to the low ground and over the force field helps a lot. I was just going to be seeing the, uh, you have some short time pulling back down to the south side, and the end of the, again, Disruptor production has really started to kick in now as well, so Disruptors will be part of this, and we head in towards the true macro, uh, true macro sort of stage of this PvP, which will be Disruptors, lots of ooing and ahhing and oh my god -ing and jumping up out of our chairs as we see the Disruptors killing everything, and the counter Disruptor shot killing everything yet again. Another Disruptor coming forward here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is pretty sick. He's just going to kill two Disruptors. I mean, that's efficient. <laughs> hey, boys. Just going to kill two Disruptors and, and, and just, like, you know, do, do an insane amount of damage to my opponent. That's insane. Two Disruptors for nothing to be uh, so far. That uh, Disruptor Neeb now here to hold the line. I like that Showtime was trying to bait him into another blink there to kill more Stalkers so he could try and throw a Disruptor towards him. But he was very uh, close with it. I'm just going to be seeing the, uh... He's just pushing up the right side again, looking to try and do a bit more damage. Stalker's blinking over as well, seeing if they can do a bit more. Ooh, Disruptor Shot is actually pretty nice there. Kind of Disruptor Shot doesn't quite connect, and... I wonder if we see the stage of the game where we see the Stargate coming down, because... I mean, I think, what the hell do you need a Stargate for now? I'm not really talking about the later game, but even just a revelation from Oracles could be so useful in this scenario, just to kind of see always where those... You know, the disruptors are, you know, where the shots are going to be coming in from, and all the rest of it as well as Dark Shrine coming up from Showtime, setting up into a new way to harass, basically. Both players expanding to their fours on the left side of the map, and I guess 
need because he can't really get to the right hand side. His opponent, Showtime, really controlling this right hand side very effectively up until this point. As you see the four DTs warping in here, and there's three, uh, one more, and a couple of zealots. This harassment going to get setting up very soon. Showtime loses another uh, immortal and maybe something else there to disrupt a shot. Not too much, and again with these uh, harassment about to start up, Nib's going to be distracted all over the place. And Showtime is the one who's going to be looking for some kills. He's going to fire Disruptor Fours there. That was Disruptor from uh, Showtime that fired earlier. It didn't matter though. He's going to be seeing DTs coming forward to start swiping. There is actually cannon, so these DTs are not going to last forever. And it's actually a pretty okay defense here from Neve. Doesn't really lose anything. Still losing the fourth Nexus though. No response to this just yet. And there's still Showtime pressuring on the right hand side with these Disruptors looking to try and push in and see what else he can do. As the Zealot Charge comes in from Showtime. It's maybe looking towards a bit of a transition, or maybe he's just going to utilize these zealots for harassment. We'll find out very shortly. And Showtime's still sat to the right. There's a uh, Oracle. I was talking about the potential Stargate being added, and turns out Neeb already has a Stargate. That's a Showtime, actually, so Stargates were added on. That's not me just trying to look clever. That's just me genuinely not realizing the Stargates were already built, guys. I apologize. <laughs> um, just didn't see those in the production tab. So Oracles are indeed on the way. Is Uh-oh. Disruptors hit one clump and two clumps of Stalkers. Neeb losing a lot right there. Never Disruptor tries to fire on in. And Showtime's still looking to see if he can... Well, he's still just holding this watchtower here. Continue to hold the right-hand side of the map throughout this game. And because he's applying so much pressure to the right, he's just never really letting Neeb apply pressure to the left, which is where his own base is. So, it's been really nice. He comes towards you. He'll have a blink away to deal with the fact that there is indeed a Disruptor flying towards him. Now he will lose this watchtower on the right side, though. So, finally, for the first time, well, the first time like five, six minutes, where Showtime... Will not just control the right side of the map. Neeb gonna split up his army a little bit. He's got a good chunk up here to the top. He's got a good chunk to the far right as well. Not gonna try to do a little bit more. Maybe just drop a shot with fire forwards. Will not quite connect here just yet. I think that's just an oracle that got cleaned out overhead. Still a lot of units from Neeb just moving around looking to see what's up. I think picking on either side, and I mean both of these players are good enough to realize that this is going late game, and I think both of the players are good enough to realize late game PvP is, well, sky toss heaven. A couple of disruptor shots here, and they will fire forwards. The disruptor goes down though for Neeb. Shout out time if the counter shot comes on in as well. You know what they need to add to the game? You know, last year they announced Blink, uh, Blink Dog Templar. Get hyped for 2018 with the Blink Disruptor. Can you imagine? Blinks forwards, fires a disruptor shot, blinks away, or fires a disruptor shot, blinks away. Man, that'd be so broken. I'd be like the, the most disgusting thing I'd ever seen. People thought Blink DTs were disgusting. They bitched about that one. Imagine the whine when they see a Blink disruptor. Wow, that could be so funny. It just came to my mind how, how hilariously awful that could create PvP. <laughs> that could make PvP. More Stargates, Mothership on the way from Neeb. Actually, Showtime a little bit faster on the carrier production here, because you're going to see some units up here. Both players somehow disengage without really losing too much in these small disruptor engagements. Neeb starting up his own carriers as well, and again, it means PvP where neither player can kill the other. And so we are going into the Sky Toss stage, as we mentioned it, we saw the Stargates coming. I mean, nothing was going to change in the next minute or so, right? So. And he will be able to get rid of this base on the right side. This is going to be very interesting though, because obviously Belshi have Vestige, a map where there is only five bases per player. So it's not as though you can go super, super late game where you're going to have like a full on you know, fleet of air. I mean, maybe once, but you're never going to be able to rebuild if you kind of trade. So the five base APs will really kind of limit their options moving forwards. And it will not be kind of like the longest game you've ever seen in PvP, which PvP can go pretty long now, I guess he's there. Oh, this shot from uh, Showtime! Doesn't quite get all the Disruptors, I thought he was going to get a couple more, but no, goes in there. Gets it, I mean, gets one, which is nice, and the follow-up Disruptor shot does pretty good as well. Players continue to trade quite nicely right now, Showtime is Disruptor trying to run away, his Alex will get the kill on that one. And Showtime again, looking for something, uh-oh! I thought it was going to go on the gateway units, but two Disruptors is also pretty deadly, still pushing forwards. Now, Showtime will be pushed back. Neeb, a lot of kind of dead supply, just warp in some more zealots. There we go, four more carriers, well, four carriers in the production tab. And that's what's going to keep him busy now. That's what's going to be filling up his supplies. He trades away these gateway units, both of them doing a similar sort of thing. He's going to be seeing the uh, Oracle on either side. Nine disruptors against seven. 
Again, some zealots charging forward, stalkers poking away. We see the immortals firing away as well, looking to see what else they can deal right now. A couple more probes going down. It's actually going to be short time this as he loses this right hand side base. Disruptor goes down just before the shot. And carriers are starting to hold this position. Meanwhile, to the left side, Oracle hits a revelation before it does get taken down by the Stalkers. The fact that these players are still playing to the left and right side of the map at the same time just shows how insanely good they both are because they're both keeping up with each other while trading in completely different locations at multiple points of the game. Just going to be seeing the, uh, again, Army of Neeb over to the right side. He has been trading a bit worse throughout the game, obviously. Only a, you know, one disruptor shot can change that so easily. But it is something you'll have to change at some point because, again, with only five bases apiece, your money is not endless on this map. And so if you both mine out five bases and you're the one that's been less efficient, well, you turn, it turns out that that means you run out of units sooner. You currently have 71 probes against the 57, so his standing army is just straight up weaker. Showtime actually with a small air upgrade advantage as well and slightly faster parole shield upgrades. Just in general, I would say uh, Showtime at this point has just got a little bit of a better kind of... Mm, he's just a little bit more kind of well set up, I guess, for the next stage, which is the Sky Toss Bay. Oh my god! Oh my god, V2! He just lost like six disruptors! Holy crap, Neeb! And he has me like, oh, well, he's a bit behind in efficiency. Well, there you go. He listened to me. He said, okay, then. 12.5k resources lost a piece now. Wow, Showtime losing pretty much every Disruptor bar, well, bar 2 that you have on the map. I mean, at this stage of the game, Disruptors aren't as important. You know, 5, 10 minutes ago, this would have been, well, 5 minutes ago, this would have been really crucial as a pickoff. I mean, it's obviously still a big pickoff, but as it stands right now, it's much more about this air army. The Disruptors will push away the army on the ground, but you don't need as many of those Disruptors. But wow, that was crazy. I'm sorry we only caught the tail end of the connection because <laughs> it was absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. You can see this army still up here though. Showtime still denying the fifth. I mean, his own fifth now dead. Had a disruptor shot, obviously initiating that. And, well, disruptor shot to try and push this away as well. What's the unit count looking like? Eight to six carriers. A favor and need, but Showtime does have more production tab, but only for a few moments. Only for a few moments now, pushing up the right hand side. He's going to look to get rid of this right hand side base. If uh, Neep was to lose his fourth, that could be pretty deadly. Uh oh. Uh oh. Disruptor shots forwards here. He didn't actually kill too much as the mothership came in. Just killed a couple of workers. Meanwhile, this army of uh, Showtime to the left is finally going to have to give up this position. 15 workers killed does lower that worker count of Neeb back to pretty much the same amount of workers as what Showtime is playing with. Oracle on the way up in the back of the natural expansion. And again, more units just gathering together to the far right. Neeb's going to hit the revel, uh, get hit by the revelation. Does, of course, clean up the Oracle very quickly afterwards. Showtime going to attempt to re-expand to the 5th base for, what, the 3rd, 4th, 5th time this game? I actually can't even keep count. How many products has he lost? Only once. The rest of the time he's just never gotten up. Which means at least he mined it a little bit. You know, he got 20 minerals off of one patch, 5 off another, 5 off this one. <laughs> he mined it for like an entire 5 seconds or something. An entire 5 seconds, guys. Crazy. A um, few stalkers to the left. There's a Mortland Zealot. Not really sure why they're just hanging out over here. I um, don't know if they're just not hotkeyed. He was just selecting them, so maybe he wants them to be there. Defend something. Zelts and Stalkers pushing in from this direction. And again, units just on both sides of the map of both of them are just defending so, so well. I'm just looking to see what else is happening. Actually, Showtime heavily outnumbering Neve on the far left side, and he will be able to once again cancel the fifth base. They should just rename this game the Battle of the Fifth Base. It's a battle that goes down in history or something. Carriers on the right from both players. What's also crazy is the fact that Showtime always just seems to have gateway units against gateway units. And it's not like there's ever carriers against gateway units, is it? The carriers always seem to be in the right position against each other. So again, both of them just continue to keep track of each other throughout the game. Let's go back to that unit tab. Look to see how things are going. 12 against 11 carriers. Disruptor count's pretty even. More stalkers from Showtime, which could help as he comes in the back here. Does get turned away. Showtime momentarily is on an air upgrade lead. In fact, a huge air upgrade lead. He has plus two air armor as well. He's also got plus two shields, which is huge. Going into plus three air weapons very quickly. It's almost finished, and plus three shields will be far ahead. So still showtime with some of these upgrade advantages. It's one of these compositions where upgrades obviously will have an effect, but will not be the be-all and end-all of the overall kind of way the game plays, I suppose. Revelation drops down yet again, and this time it doesn't actually really quite hit as much as you would want it to. It doesn't hit all those carriers. 
with the scepters flying forwards. Is, is there observers or are they just completely relying? There is observers in the armies. And this is such a technical kind of composition to play because you need to keep those observers or some kind of detection alive. Have to always make sure you've got the right stuff here and there. And well, this big stalker counterattack, this is pretty huge. There's a revelation. That one hits a bit better. I mean, these stalkers, I mean, I don't know really what Neve is hoping to do warping in his own stalkers against this. Like, it's just not going to be enough. I mean, I know he's getting a carry or two out, but mm, I'm not too sure. Recalls back home. These stalkers, what they're going to do? Showtime doesn't even realize these units are over here. He's just going to try and target down carries. He's going to get one. Just one, I think. <laughs> Look at all the dead stalkers all over the ground. Hey, it pulls uh, Neve away from the right side of the map, and Showtime is going to maybe be able to get another 20 minerals off of this base. Resources lost is so close. A hundred, two hundred and twenty between them. I mean, that is just a stalker, more or less. I mean, a little bit more, but it really isn't. It's like a stalker and a probe. That's how close these guys have been trading throughout the game. The Oracle squad will come forwards here. Look to hit the Revelation again. We'll lose one and two Oracles. Not sure why you would fly all three Oracles forwards together. Uh, maybe just because he's afraid the first one going down before it hits a revelation. Maybe he just feels he needs two to hit everything in position here. I'm actually not really 100% certain. Probe's doing to try and long distance mine because Neeb is mining out. He needs this left hand side base. And I mean, I was kind of just joking before, kind of calling this game the Battle of the Fifth Base, but it is actually going to be what decides this game in the near future. Because if Neeb doesn't get this up very shortly, he's going to be in trouble because he isn't going to have anything else to mine from. And even just being able to mine the few minerals that Showtime's gotten from this base. That will make the difference if they trade effectively and efficiently and equally in the next fight. Which, of course, right now we don't know how it's going to happen. Oracle goes down again. This time it's Neeb's Oracle. 13 into... Uh, uh, sorry, carriers apiece. There's still better upgrades here for Showtime 2. And I think you've got to realize that that is going to be a big part of this upcoming fight. Interesting there's no Archons just to try and help against the Interceptors. Here we go. Disruptors on the ground. Fire force. There's nothing really underneath these carriers, though. Although Showtime... His supply is dropping very quickly. Disruptors from Showtime are finally going to fire forwards. And he's going to be able to kill a couple of things. I'm, I, I, I really don't know. I mean, I mean, what do you want me to say, guys? Like, I have no idea what's happening. Neeb is going to lose the carrier fight, and that means that I think Showtime just wins the game because Showtime's just going to be able to kill off everything else afterwards. So while Neeb was winning initially, he just doesn't win the carrier fight at all. GG. I'm sorry. Off the series great example of what PvP can be when you let it go into the later stages of the game. When you get that aggressive playstyle. Um, well, well, it's sort of like, it was it was just crazy, right? I mean, always units on the left side of the map, always units on the right. Both of them so desperate to deny that fifth base time and time again. Both of them hitting kind of the same sort of attack, you know, at the same sort of times. And all the rest of it as well. It really was just a fantastic series. Uh, fantasy, I, I'm saying I'm going to a series already. A fantastic game. Fantastic first map. Guys, the bottom right hand side of the map, we're going to start off by introducing the player who is down a game. A blue Protoss from Ting is me. Good save. Set the wrong corner of the map. Bet you guys didn't even notice I swapped over there to make it ha make sense and have a smooth transition. Ha 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 ha. Duel. Bottom left side, our red Protoss player. Give it up, guys, if you're cheering on the European, the German. Showtime. Two gateways starting up on either side. Feels like an eternity since we saw the opening two gateways in game one because it was just such an action packed game. I mean, a 20 minute game is pretty long nowadays, but honestly. It felt like so much more than a 20 minute game just because of how much was jammed inside of it. Like there wasn't a moment where we stopped and sat back and were like, whoa, you know, we weren't, you know, we never sat back and were like, whoa, let's take a moment to figure out what's happening. No, there was a depth, there was, well, there wasn't actually really a depth, there was, I'm so used to seeing the depths because it's Protoss, right? They use adepts for everything. There's always carriers and disruptor shots and all the rest of it, which was pretty awesome. Let's see how this continues on. Cybercore will finish. And we'll see if we're going to see Adepts versus Stalkers this time. Maybe Adepts versus Adepts. It's going to be Adepts initially. MSC, no ma uh, units made just yet from Neeb. He's going to go Stalkers. So we are going to see Adepts versus Stalkers, which gives me an opportunity to talk about Adepts versus Stalkers. The Adepts generally get a bit more map control initially, and they can generally get in towards the main base to scout. Um, showtime, the way that ne well, the way Neeb set up, though, is that you can wall here with a pylon to block the Adepts getting in. The Stalkers generally will give you more continuous map control and a stronger fighting force continuing on. 
And you can see already Showtime throwing down two Stalkers straight after his first two adepts. So let's see what he can get done with these as he's uh, running over to the right hand side of the map. Again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Do appreciate you joining us for the Takes Penthouse Party number two. Don't forget to hit that follow button on the stream as well if you haven't already. And of course, if you're. Uh, well, just spread the word. Tell people we're live. Tell people we're in the lower bracket final. The winner plays Gumiho. Because, uh, well, you know, <laughs> they've been sick games, and let's just uh, get this tournament the attention it deserves, right? The attention it deserves. We usually see this uh, membership court here again turned away by the two stalkers. The scout in from Neeb is fairly unsuccessful. Doesn't really see any of the tech. Twilight Council will be the choice once again from Showtime. Same as he went for in the last game. As Neeb going to opt for that Stargate opener. That's 75% of the way done already. So the Stargate with an Oracle initially. We'll probably not go into Phoenix as a follow. It's been a long time since you've seen Phoenix in PvP apart from... Um, apart from when you get like the, um, you know, Phoenix versus E Phoenix, Stargate against Stargate. So, just an Oracle initially, and we'll see if Neeb can get some good damage done with this. I mean, initially here, Showtime, just, just what do you use an overcharge on? Membership call to force it back home, I think? Okay. Um, I mean, he's got the Trifecta of Pylons, which will protect his main mineral line. He's got enough anti air to kind of defend as well. I was just going to be seeing the, uh, Probus transfer into the low ground, another sentry will warp on in, and the blink upgrade being Chrono boosted out from Showtime. So, going straight in towards blink here, both will go into the robo follow up. So, Showtime will have blink to play for a while. He still has these first two adepts, by the way. They haven't killed anything, they've not really done too much in terms of scouting as well. They've not really been past the front kind of, well, the front two bases. So, the adepts haven't done a lot here so far. Uh, but keeping them alive means at least you can still use them in the army. We've seen the uh, Oracle coming in, does find one worker. Sentries are getting a little bit exposed over here. We'll not go for it though, we'll just continue to pick off the probes. Four of them going down. Obviously Neeb, as he falls behind in the blink upgrade, will be able to take a small worker lead. Ge generally, you would expect him to be able to take a small worker lead because of the damage this Oracle will try and get done throughout the early stages, of course. So, you can see this Voidray is uh, coming up here. From the Stargate, that's going to be the next follow-up here. And, well, Void Rays are something we've seen a bit more of in PvP lately. We've been seeing a few more of them here and there, so another probe does go down. Another overcharge, and Oracle does get pushed back once more. And again, just going to be seeing the Phoenix just seeing this, uh... Just seen this Void Ray on the way up, I guess. Immortal too. I mean, when you go Void Rays, you generally go Immortals. What you're going for is a kind of a non-Twilight, non-Gateway sort of uh, play style. And you're just looking to realistically play with, uh, again, kind of like the real power units, which is the Void Rays, the Immortals. The units that have a lot of health, they don't die easily, they're tech heavy, they're expensive. But they deal a lot of damage, and that's sort of the big thing. So that's what uh, Neeb's going to set up in towards even a second Stargate to continue his Void Ray production. Meanwhile, Showtime gets into a nice fast plus one upgrade, which of course will help him fight against those units in the sky on the ground. And uh, you can see that the gateway usage of Neeb for the most part is a few stalkers earlier, and then he's now starting to set up some sentries as well for those force fields wherever possible. Is this Tick TV again? Don't think it's me. Two depths start a shade on through, and we do see again the stalkers just going to be coming for us, and actually. Probably just worth committing, even if he only gets one or two probes, he gets three. Yeah, that's not so bad, three probe kills. I mean, these adepts are going to die over here anyways. We're going to see, uh-oh, wow, showtime. Well, that's a bit of a mad one. You know, six and a half minutes in game, just going to proxy the double stargate to the top left side. I mean, he saw, I mean, he's seen the void rays being built. And my problem for him is if he's trying to go double stargate to mass voids to kind of out produce void rays of his opponent. Well, he's in for a little bit of a sore kind of. He's in for a bit of a kind of a sad realization when he sees the fact that his opponent is also making double void rays, right? Plus one air weapons as well for Neeb. So I mean, these voids are just going to be way more effective for Neeb than Showtime. He's going to make Phoenix. Okay. Right, we're in the realms of Wardy having absolutely no clue what's going on. If you've seen a PvP like this recently, I'd be very happy to know. I'm trying to think about it. So maybe the Phoenix can trade with the Voids? That just that doesn't, doesn't sound right, does it? Um, yeah, I, I have no idea. 
I have really genuinely no idea. Because I feel as though Showtime sort of knows the kind of composition Neeb's building into, but... I mean, maybe it's just a misread? Maybe he's reading this wrong. I, I really don't know. Sorry, I'm going to have to just turn off analysis mode and go play by play because I am in, as intrigued as anyone else as to what exactly this might be. Again, I haven't been able to watch any of these Showtime Neeb series recently, so I would have I would have loved to kind of figure this out. I'm not sure. I actually, I thought I watched them at WCS Austin, but now that I think about it, maybe I missed that series or something because I'm trying to think if I've seen this at all, but it doesn't ring a bell. Wow. Well, we'll we'll see what happens. So this day at Phoenix from Showtime, I mean, now he sees the double target of his opponent, right? Yes. And he's just going to keep building Phoenix. He's obviously very happy to go for this. Um, I mean, Neeb just has so much army supply. 70 to 45, moving across the map. Showtime is plus two attack on the way. Templar Archive starts to drop on down. Does he just die? I mean, he's bringing the Phoenix over, but he's only got, like... What the Phoenix going to do? Like, are they really going to fight the Voids? I mean, I can understand them maybe lifting Immortals, etc., but... Uh, I, I don't know. Little Charge is going to come down to buy a little bit of time here at least. Showtime lets his army go through too far forwards. Again, Phoenix still joining up together. I'm just going to be seeing the... Uh... Well, it's still, the <laughs> still the Phoenix, and Showtime is still building more Phoenix. <sighs> I'm just so confused. I'm just... I just don't have an answer. He's going to come in here now. I guess we begin to see. Kills off a Void Ray. Wow. Kills off two Void Rays. Well, at the same time, he's being pushed on the other side of the map. Prismatic Alignment Pop. That's a very dead third Nexus. Is there a way for Showtime to fight this army? Is there a way for him to clean this up? Because he can clean up everything. Well, there's a possibility. Here we go. Phoenix is going to fly on in. And, ah, Mothership Call. Recalls already. That means that now, obviously, Neeb can sit in a more defensive position. He doesn't need to attack any further. I mean, if the Phoenix were there a bit sooner, kill the Mothership Core, this could have been very, very different. Phoenix actually wrecked Void Ray as well. Today I learned, man, I just didn't... I had no idea. I, I Have I just, like, not watched PvP at all recently or something? Like, how did I not know this? That's insane. I mean, I mean, I see, as soon as they traded for the first Void, I just was not expecting it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me on the right track, guys. Um, yeah, Phoenix Wreck Void Rays. I guess it makes sense in some regards. Wow, my PvP knowledge is not up to scratch. That's something we're going to have to watch a lot of games of, aren't we? So, uh, going to be seeing the uh, Phoenix coming up to the top side. and Well, I mean, Showtime is still very much so in this. I feel as though he kind of... I mean, yes, he lost the third Nexus, but he rebuilds. And as he rebuilds, he's getting past the more difficult stage of this game for himself, which was... I feel getting up to the reasonable Phoenix count and going into Storm and just getting all of this tech uh, kind of set up initially. Splitting the Phoenix actually here is interesting. Yeah, Phoenix, they do. They just attack so fast. They do so much damage to Void Rays. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Wow. <laughs> I mean, isn't that beautiful? You're watching Wardy learn about PvP. Next time we cast PvP and this happens, I'm going to pretend I'm really knowledgeable and be like, Oh yeah, well, you know, guys, I know exactly how this plays out. You see, he's going to make the Phoenix, because Phoenix are very good against Void Rays. Got to make a fool of yourself sometimes to be clever the rest of the time. That's not a saying, is it? Nah, it's not. We'll, we'll stop. Carriers on the way from Neeb. Now, I'm pretty sure... Don't tell me Phoenix counter carriers. So, surely there's going to be, have to, at some point here, be a transition from... Uh, Show, uh, from Showtime into an air army of his own past these uh, Phoenix. Maybe he just goes across the map and tries to kill him. I mean, you think about this right now. He's got Blink, Glaive, plus two, and Storm. Push forwards can be very difficult to deal with, and that's probably why we see Neeb investing into so many cannons. So many cannons on the way at the moment. Obviously, these few Phoenix on the top side from Showtime as well going to come in towards the base and have a look to see what he can get up to. One probe going to get taken down. And the rest of the army here from Showtime just moving forwards and looking to see what I might be able to get up to. Feedback the Mothership Core wouldn't kill it. Stops it from using some of its abilities, if you see. <sighs> I, feel, I think this feels very do or die, right, for uh, for Showtime. Because with carriers about to pop, he still doesn't have anything initially set up to here to deal with this. In terms of air upgrades, he's going to be heavily behind as well. And Neve continues to uh, set up into this. Again, Mothership Core throws down an overcharge at the front. I'm just not sure about the later game. Like, are the Phoenix still going to be that useful now? 
Well, they're not just going to... I feel as though a lot of the Phoenix power is just going to be the fact they can dart in and out of engagements, whereas... Oh, Stasis Ward. It's a nice catch. I mean, he might be able to blink away and see if these units. Depends how exactly Showtime positions himself over them. Sorry, Knee positions himself over them. Ah, Showtime. He's trying to break through, but he just isn't tapping it. And now Carriers are continuing to come on in. So many Carriers coming up here. You see those Stalkers can try and blink back, perhaps? They just get annihilated by initial Carriers. Backs away from the prismatically aligned voids. Obviously does not want to stick around in that for too long. And, well, Showtime is a guy to get plus three attack. Woohoo. He needs a heck of a lot of stalkers. Something that really shoots up and shoots up a lot and quickly. Does a lot of damage. I mean, I guess he still has storms, which helps a lot against the voids. It can help against interceptors. Let's see if it's enough. I'm, I'm really intrigued. Can he make this happen? Because it feels like a very difficult situation. Let's see if Showtime can find a way to just prove how... Crazy good a player he is. Feedback's the MS uh, Mothership. I guess just an MS, not an MSC. Nowadays. A couple of Archons coming in too. The Archon's very nice against Interceptors as well. The splash damage actually does a... And then against Voids. I mean, just in general, the splash damage will do a good job against this generally stacked up army. Of Neeb. Neeb continue to expand as well. This game really seems... Neeb is in control of it though. I'm still waiting for Showdown to just prove me wrong and push through and just win this fight so convincingly or something. Void still up in the sky, and again, just seeing a little, some little bits and pieces. Gonna see a Nexus coming down here, a pylon as well from Neeb. Setting up into this, and again, another carrier just coming forwards and looking to see what else is uh, going on. Who's near Phoenix? Gets shot down. Showtime still just patiently sort of waiting here, still with nothing else coming in for himself apart from. Well, he's got plus one shield on the way, I mean. Is that really is that really gonna be changing him, you know, putting him into such a better position against these carriers than if he was to fight now before there's more of them, before there's plus three air weapons? Probably not. Probably not, it's difficult. It's very difficult. Pull them all to the south side, they're gonna get taken down. I mean at this point Neve just wants to trade these for whatever. Obviously Showtime has to kill them, because otherwise they're gonna kill quite a lot of probes. So he has to clean those up. Army to the south north side, Neve looking to see what else is happening in the center. Showtime still just gathering together as well, and well, again, Void's going to start working their way through this nice storm initially. That's the power of the storm already shown there on the Voids. There's a lot of them going loot down on shields. Another nice storm, and one more. Now sort of storm himself again, looking to fight the interceptors. Look how quickly the interceptors are dying, man. These carriers don't have many of them left. Blinks forwards. Here we go. Void is prismatically aligned, though, and that alignment is just going to destroy the Stalkers, and Showtime's army gets absolutely destroyed. This was sort of what I thought this would look like, if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I mean, I, I wanted to believe in the Storms, I wanted to believe in this sort of composition, but it just wasn't happening at all, and that's more or less going to be GG. Phoenix and Stalker's going to try and come in again, but the Carriers have enough Interceptors, I think, here to keep fighting the Voids. They don't have Prismatic Alignment, but they still do good damage. And it looks as though we are going to Game 3 between these two players in the very near future, because Showtime really has nothing left at all. Kills the Mothership. Last few Voidrays, uh, Stalker, sorry, go down. Voidrays, look at how many of them are low health. Like, that's insane. Like, what, one health? One health, two health, and five health? <laughs> We're the low hit point, low hit point Void Boys, man. Let's go. Let's go. Still going to be seeing the, uh... You know, just kind of continue to move forwards. Moving back in towards the center, Stalkers. I mean, Showtime doing what he can to stay alive here, but I mean, what's he going to do? Mass Stalker against a tier 3 army? And a lot of these units from Neeb just... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, what do you want me to say, guys? Like, oh, here we go. The Stalkers, the Blink Micro! Kills half the Void Ray! <laughs> Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I, I jest because I jest because um, it's one of those moments where Showtime probably is pretty sure. I think he knows it's over. It's just he wants to stay in the game, maybe think about it a bit, think about how he might approach this in a future game. Maybe just think about what went wrong, digest the loss in a tournament where you know you're gonna probably come out of this game, get invited to a lobby, and pretty much have to ready up right away. It can be nice to run around and just mess around a little bit at the end of the game, cool down again, think about what happened, maybe get the tilt out of you. You know, if you get that opportunity, sometimes it just helps players think about, you know, what's going to be next. I mean, obviously, Showtime, the sort of player that just will never give up anyways. And he will try to kind of 
bring some stalkers up to this north side. Hey, you never know, maybe watch the beginning of the greatest comeback ever known to StarCraft 2. As we see these uh, stalkers. Oh, yeah, they're doing okay to the north, unfortunately to the south, you can't quite say the same. They get Void Raid, they get a uh, carry it, and they do have to uh, pull back again. Again, stalkers uh, still up to the north, fighting away, probes are trying to fight against them. The lone pylon, which will power all of these cannons again very shortly, is coming through. Uh, Stalker's gonna get rid of a uh, another carrier right there. It's okay, it's decent. I mean, the Stalker's still go down and, well, pushing forwards. Neighbors had enough of this nonsense. At least enough to kind of kill off a base. Now he's gonna pull back again, man. He's still worried about these Stalkers, which, if, to be fair, are kind of doing quite a lot more than you'd probably like them to be doing. Again, Showtime sure, staying in this game, not gonna give it up so easily. You know, just try and use the multitask and the run around tactics to do what he can. Hits a pylon, which is powering five cannons yet again. Interceptors returns to some of those carriers there. And to the north side, these couple of adepts in the warp prism are going to be looking to see what they can do as well. So they're looking to see where else they can get to. Still a lot of stalkers to the south from Showtime. Looking to set up, looking to see what's happening. A couple of adepts still doing a little bit more damage. And again, a lot of carriers just moving up north. I think at this point, has, has Neep left some more units behind? Eh, he's left a bit more behind than he's been leaving behind before, so... Pushing in towards the upper left base, I mean, the mining for Showtime is slowly just disappearing. I mean, Neep's been in an incomplete income lead for a good long time in this game. Army supply. <laughs> but you can see the fight that changed and pretty much determined this game. Neep was, it was in the lead earlier as well. And I think, in general, the game went a bit better for Neep throughout. And he, uh, well, he took the fight to just sort of completely, uh... Very convincingly, just uh, throws us down. There's the GG, and Neeb ties the series up one game apiece. We do want to go and go into Abyssal Reef. Tied up one apiece between these two Protoss players who just can't stop trading maps with each other. A variety of strategies, crazy long games, great play from both. I mean, two games so far in this best of five lower bracket final. And they are both really delivering once again. Bottom right hand side of the map, a yellow Protoss player. Give it up, guys, if you're going to be cheering on Neeb from Ting. Top left, red Protoss, armor teams, showtime. Do let us know who you're cheering for. Let us know who you're supporting in this series. Thank you very much for joining me today, guys. I'm Wardy. I appreciate a lot of you guys might not have listened to me cast before because... You may have come in from a base trade host, you might just be seeing this tournament, but we've got lots of viewers or something, so hello. I'm a full-time streamer, caster, content producer for StarCraft 2, so... Again, if you're enjoying what you're hearing, or what you're watching, consider hitting the follow button up to the upper right-hand side of your screen. And again, if you do want to support further, all the usual options available. And, uh, does go a long way towards allowing me to continue staying as a full-time streamer. Thank you very much! X Wurzag X for the Twitch Prime sub. Just coming in right there. I appreciate it, dude. Can we get some love in the chat for that one? Some STI hearts or some normal hearts if you're not a sub to STI heart yourself. Thank you very much for the support, dude. Appreciate the Twitch Prime sub. Hope you enjoy your month for the channel as a subscriber. As we do again set up into this uh, third game. Nothing too crazy in the very early stages. Two gates apiece. And, uh,. Uh, two Stalkers and two more Stalkers from Showtime, two Adepts into two Stalkers from Neeb, so... Again, little bits and pieces, just slight changes in the early game, allowing both players to just play slightly differently. Showtime, with the, you know, with the Stalkers, are obviously, is obviously kind of hoping to go into towards the Twilight and blink again. Neeb with the Adepts, will go into a Stargate, he's got Adepts and Stalkers. I mean, one of the things Adepts can do that Stalkers will not, is they can generally try and bait out some Photon Overcharges. And if you can bait out a Photon Overcharge, when you're going into a Stargate follow-up yourself, well, that, of course, could be pretty fantastic as a way to, uh, you know, if you uh, go into a Stargate follow-up yourself, if you create out an overcharge, then the Oracle may get there and there may not be a follow-up overcharge, and that's exactly what's happened so far. Or there might just be one less overcharge, which is still just as useful, you know? As indeed, we do see again the Oracle on the way up against the Blink play. Feels a little bit, uh, feels a little bit similar to the previous game in a way. It'll be interesting to see how Showtime will try and approach this one. I mean, I think it's very much so going to depend on how both players approach it. If either of them go for a bit of a different strategy, you know, if Nee plays the same composition, it would be interesting to see what Showtime changed in particular. But you know, obviously, Nee changes up his kind of play style. Then 
you know, watching what Showtime does is obviously not quite as you know influential as you can see. The Oracle actually being used here to help fight the Stalkers. Showtime still has the health advantage here, but with the Oracle coming back through, he might very quickly lose that. We'll try and turn fight. He will look for the kill. He'll go for the Oracle now, I imagine. And he will get it very low. And the fact that he even gets the Oracle low is nice. I mean, he doesn't get the kill. And he does lose two more Stalkers here than what his opponent lost. But, again, the Oracle very low and will not be able to harass as it usually would. I mean, it will regenerate some shields. As you just have this army. Coming in towards the top side and, again, looking to see what's up and... What is happening? Blink coming down the Twilight Council. Thank you very much, Danard100, for the cheer 5 in the chat. Slowly chipping away at Dovin Wolf, the pit boss at the moment. Slowly chipping away. Bit by bit. Or well, five bits at a time recently. Good defense against the Oracles. Nothing lost at all by Showtime. And it's need will use some Revelation Prime. He's already popped the Pulsar Beams. May as well get some Pulsar Beam power. Uh, going for himself. And he will uh, we'll use it. And he's just going to try and take down this pylon. Is he going to get it? Stork is coming on in. Oh my god, that the pylon is going to survive. Drops the revelation on his way out. And that is going to be those sentries and stalkers caught, caught on up. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Just Be Executor, for the Twitch Prime sub as well. Sub train hype. Two in a row. Maybe not quite a sub train just yet. Maybe a bit of a sub bus. Thank you very much. Appreciate the Twitch Prime sub. Get some more love on the chat, please, for another Twitch Prime sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, appreciate the support. Forge on the way out from Neeb, second Stargate yet again, and so this is once more obviously looking to be the same build from Neeb as what we saw in the last game, the same composition. And so our question becomes, what does Showtime do? What does he change up? What does he play out differently? Probably, well... I mean, obviously, he could try to go for the um, double Stargate. He is instead just going to throw down Temple Archives a lot faster. And with the Temple Archives, he'll probably aim to play into the Storm and just sort of go from that point on. And there's a model on the way out, or two Voids at a time. The Storm is actually very effective against both Immortals and Void Rays. Like, a surprising amount. I mean, Void Rays will just die to Storm, they very quickly clump up. Uh, but even the Immortals, too. Just because the Storm can do so much to kind of work their way through the shields and pop barriers, etc. It can actually be a good combination. So far, just using the Temple Archives for the uh, Archon production. One Archon being morphed in and just being left to the right hand, uh, left hand side, third base. Just going to keep a couple of High Templar not as an Archon. You might be wondering, well, why if he hasn't started an Absorm? It might just be because he's looking to hunt down an Oracle. You know, if an Oracle flies in, if he can see it and grab the feedback before it's a revelation... Or maybe he just forgot to morph them into Archons. That was my reasoning, though. If there was a reason he didn't morph it into an Archon, it probably would have been for that. <laughs> but yeah, maybe he just forgot. Maybe he just forgot. Man, these players really kind of uh, draining each other here. Obviously, will make life difficult for whoever has to go into the finals against Gumiho. Of course, winner of this jumps up from $500 they take home to $900. So it's basically a $400 money match. And of course, you get the chance to play... For the first place prize, which is 1600 if you can take down Gumiho from a 1-0 disadvantage. Adepts, a couple Stalkers, a couple Sentries, Archons. I mean, is this going to be enough to push on through the Stasis Ward set up to help defend? In the main base, we're going to see the Prism coming through, and that is going to be a lot of these Adepts coming in. But actually, using the Oracles to defend is a pretty smart choice here. I'm going to see the rest of this army going to send the Stasis... Uh, sorry, set the Stasis off, Ward off with that single Adept initially. There you go, going to be seeing a few Adepts moving on forwards, Archons as well. Looking to see what else they can get going for themselves, using up, uh, well, just pushing forwards. And is it going to be enough? Resonating Glaives on the ground, the Archons starting to fall. It turns out it is not enough. Showtime pulls back, but only for now. I mean, he's got Stalkers ready to go as well. He's got Blink on these Stalkers, remember. And that Prismatic Alignment gone on the Void Rays. There's only going to be one overcharge instead of the two from before. Adepts going to try and uh, go in towards the uh, Natural Mineral Line. Using the Stalkers to blink back, keep themselves safe. Adepts coming in again, and they are continuing to work their way through these probes. Good stuff so far, and again, a good amount of units just sticking themselves to the right-hand side. Pylons continue to drop on down here. As the Voids come in, they'll look to see what else they can get up to as well. Still these Stalkers trading away. This Void Ray is about to get popped on down, as the Void Ray backs off also. And still these units of Showtime looking to gather up together. Stalkers to another Archon starting to morph on in. 
Looking to see what else is about to happen. Thank you very much, by the way, as well, for another Twitch Prime sub, Tooks07. Thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate another Twitch Prime sub. Some more love in the chat, please. Twitch Prime sub train really is real now. It def it's definitely a train now. It's no longer a bus. We've upgraded. Showtime. Setting up at the front. Let's continue to focus on this here. As you can see, Stalker's blinking forward. Oracle's go down. He's going to try and get rid of this immortal. He's pretty down a force field. Obviously, it doesn't matter if there's an arc on here. Showtime. He's hit by these overcharges. And in the end, Nebel once again push this back. Two more void rays on the way. And the problem is, I think Showtime... I mean, he's not really getting rid of enough void rays. If two are building at a time and he's just still not getting rid of any, it's becoming more and more difficult for him to engage into this every few moments. Just going to be seeing the Stalkers continue to uh, see what else is going to happen. We're going to see this uh, Pylon getting taken down as well. And, well, Neeb's still trying to push up the right-hand side. See what else is happening. A couple of adepts going to get pushed away right away. And, ooh, yeah, I mean, this is the sort of problem. Showtime at some point has to turn and fight, although he will go now with the prismatic alignment wearing out. Is it enough? Adepts to tank the immortals as the stalkers come through. Ah, the stalkers lose a lot of them there. Oh, prismatic alignment. Oh, I didn't realize he only used prismatic alignment on, like, half the void. Did he even use it before? Wow, he's got it up on, like, all of the voids. I didn't even realize that. I had no idea. Adepts are winning through on the ground, though. And that could be the kind of game changer as more stalkers warp in. And Void Rays might not make a difference if the Adepts are out of, you know, are kind of forced them kind of to be seen as out of position. Workers are going down very quickly. Neeb is losing a lot of economy, but he is way ahead on that army supply. Especially as a lot of these Adepts go down. Adepts shade away. They're not going to go for more kills in the main. They're not going to be greedy. Blinks in. Two Void Rays this time will indeed fall. We are going to be seeing a Warp Prism again picked off as well. That might be the end of this aggression here for Showtime if he's got no uh, Warp Prism to keep on warping in. I mean, obviously he can rebuild a Prism, but it takes a while. Behind all of this, we haven't really looked back on the top left-hand side of the map at all yet. But Showtime is up to four bases. Something, of course, he can do rather easily considering he has been controlling the map. He's 20 workers up, but he's still on again. A less kind of tech-heavy army supply. The army, I would say, is generally better here still from Neeb. So let's see if it's going to work out as we do see the voids, the immortals, getting set up and ready to go. We'll be seeing this uh, Nexus going to get targeted down. Again with the blink, we can still see Showtime controlling the map, coming in, attacking, and now blinking away. And still units just gathering up together from Neve on the right hand side. Again, Stalker's Adepts. Looking to see what they can get up to as well. A few units from Neve just going to be uh, gathering towards the front and again pushing on forwards. Let's see a couple of High Templar warping in two and again these units just going to split up a little bit and again Archon starts some more fun in. A couple more Archons towards the back, more Adepts, more Stalkers. Looking to see if you can push on forwards. Still Neve yeah, Showtime playing this very aggressive playstyle. Thing is Neve is starting to go up in towards carriers and actually Neeb gets some units across the map to do some damage as well. Fourth base goes down once again. Again, Showtime looking to break Neeb before he can get into too high attack. Thinking forwards, we're going to see these Void Rays. These Void Rays are in trouble against all of these Stalkers. I think the Archons are getting really good damage. Neeb is losing a lot. Look at the Void Ray parts float up to the top of the surface. Well, float up to the surface. Here on Abyssal Reef, blinking forwards. One, two, more Void Rays going down. That right there is the engagement to end the game. GG. Thump. 17 more sub points until we get there. In case any of you want to help us along in the way on the journey, you can forever call yourself one of the people who helped Wardy gain the Wardy Thump emote. It's made, it's ready to upload, we just need enough subs, imagine that. Guys, thank you so much for the support, seriously though, can we get some love in the chat for all the subs and stuff, it is awesome. And uh, the donation too, the $10, thank you very much guys. Appreciate it. Let's go into this, let's see what's going to happen. Bottom left side of the map, a yellow Protoss player. He is down a game, and he's going to throw down the Nexus first. It's Neeb. Unfortunately, though, he gets scouted immediately by Showtime. Let's see what Showtime does to fight this. He might. He might be able to, uh... Might be able to uh, pressure this if he wants to. Showtime, bottom right-hand side. Let's see what he decides to do. Why again, adds crack. Um, we don't turn off ads for subs because that's what the subs told me they would 
rather. They would rather if they... They'd rather kind of help support the stream even further. It should never say that you should uh, get ad-free viewing when you subscribe to this channel. Alright guys, let's uh, go into this and see how this is going to go, of course. And again, I'm intrigued to see what Showtime wants to do. Immediately, Chrono boost the Mothership Core. A couple of Adepts as well. Uh, he's going to pile on, isn't he? Is he? Maybe? I mean, this probe is still around here. So it is definitely something you could try and do. Throw down pylons, overcharge them, and use them as a way to help break through. Be aggressive. What gate does start? We don't see extra gates still anything just yet from Showtime. That probe goes back into the main. Again, just trying to time it out. So far, still no units out from Neeb. Is he going to pylon or is he not? What's he wanting to do? I wonder where, if he does pylon, I wonder where. The thing is now, Neeb can get a Mothership Core as well. Uh, sorry, Showtime. Uh, yeah, sorry, Neeb can get a Mothership Core as well. So Pylon has to be kind of well placed, and here we go. Showtime's going to build it over to this side. So behind the mineral line, probes will be pulled immediately against this as Neeb gets ready to defend. So Neeb gets ready to defend. And we're just going to be seeing the uh, Mothership Core indeed from Showtime coming across into the main base in the next couple of moments. These are Debs coming up into the high ground, so they're going to be here soon as well. This pylon is going to be allowed to finish Showtime. As the Mothership Core arrives, we'll throw that overcharge down, and probes are going to start dropping. The MSC actually taking some hits. Will go down. Maybe not exactly how Showtime wanted that to go towards the end here, but... In fact, I think... Mm, was, this a, was this good enough? Mm, I don't know. Was this good enough? I don't think the MSC is going to die so quickly, because then he can get another overcharge off, which would be hugely beneficial. Seven workers. I mean, it evens up the worker count, but he's still only just starting up his uh, expansion. Now, you do have to remember he's got a Stargate in the main base. And with the Stargate in the main base, the Oracle will be able to come across the map and look to try and get some damage done as well, of course. So, so yeah, he's still got ways to do more damage and to keep me back. So far, no, I don't think he's done enough. In the near future... Potentially. Let's see what this Oracle can do. I mean, yeah, Showtime is still kind of six workers down. Just slightly down in army supply as well. You see the Oracle coming through. We'll just go for a couple probes. Even the Stalkers, he has to commit a little bit. Two probes getting taken down. And again, that warp gate is going to be finishing up in a couple moments here from Neep. Two gates at the front as well. And again, there's that... Uh, Second Oracle coming up forwards too. Still need seven worker advantage. And now he's going to put a pile on up to the top side of the map. Not really sure what this is going to be about. Showtime himself now going to go into a Void Ray. And of course with this uh, Void Ray coming on through, we're going to be seeing it about halfway done. The Robo Facility is starting up as well. These couple of Oracles going to just, well, suicide in apparently. He's going to lose one, he's going to lose the other one as well. Ah, only five workers as well, it means he's on only four worker advantage. Uh, I mean, four workers is recoverable, but I think it's just the fact that Neeb's generally mining so much more. And the fact the oracles are down as well, it means that Showtime's just missing out on a little bit of what he's been producing. He does have a Void Ray, and he does have an Overcharge available at the front, so let's see uh, how this is going to go. We're going to see the Overcharge being thrown down, and, well... I mean, the pylons just dropping right away. Stalkers will back away from the uh, Void Ray. No alignment popped just yet, which is obviously a pretty big deal. Still working his way through that Zealot. And again, the Nexus is taking a little bit more damage as well. Comes in, now he's going to target down the Void Ray, knowing how important a unit that is in this composition. Zealot will go down too, and now he just has more units. No pylon on the low ground, and Showtime is in a lot of trouble. Because his Nexus on the low ground... Well, it's just not going to mind, and now again, just, you know, again, he's just going to get further ahead. Throws down double Stargate. What is it with everyone hiding double Stargate on this map? Or well, not on this map, but today in this series. I mean, obviously, I guess from Neve, the double Stargate hidden. Uh, well, I guess it's the exact same idea that what Showtime went for. You don't want it to be scouted, because you don't want your opponent to respond to it, and he's just going to start getting it up. I feel as though, obviously, it's going to be kind of a better idea for... Maybe not a better idea. I think it'll be... I think it will go better. For Neeb, then it goes for Showtime here. So let's see how this uh, see how this goes. And you're seeing again the Stalkers is collecting together to the left hand side, and we are going to be seeing a couple of assimilators taken from Showtime. He's just so delayed on everything, though. Again, that income lead is going to be bobbing up in favor of Neeb at all points with a ten worker advantage. The army supply 
is where that income lead gets turned into, as well as some extra tech advantages here and there as well, I'm sure. Um, I mean, the fact he's on double Stargate and more, uh, Robo rather than single Stargate Robo is probably one thing to um, get you going right from the get-go. This Oracle Hallucinator does pull back to the left side. Sorry, does not pull back, does go to the left side. Looks to be a threat, but I mean, at the very least, he's going to force some problems to pull away. I mean, he ruins mine in time for like a couple of seconds, really not much more. A hallucination doesn't kill anything. Two more Stargates from Showtime. Did he realize what this is? Have you seen it? Oh, he has indeed. Wow. What a scout. Was he just on the way up here to like... I think he wanted to hide a base up here. Saw the Stargates, so instead he has to hide a base up here. Realizing that he probably won't be able to hold a third. I mean, Showtime knows he's behind, so he's making the moves, which are more likely to pull him back into the game. He's got to take some risk. He's got to take some chances at this point being this far behind. And this was good information for Showtime, though. I mean, he sees the fact that there's a double Stargate up here, so he's able to start building Phoenix. Generally, that's why they are hidden, those Stargates. And now we see, again, the Nexus building to the top side in the 12 o'clock position. Again, that's the risk to try and, again, pull him back into this a little bit. Two more of these, uh... Two more of these, um... Phoenix are about to pop out here. Still setting up into these. We see a lot more Phoenix coming down the right-hand side. Going to get ready to fly on in. And again, look to see if they can get a little bit of damage done. But there's going to be Phoenix in response plus an overcharge. Like, the combination is kind of weird. How many Phoenix are we at? Seven against five. Showtime actually has a, a decent number of Phoenix. Surprised we didn't see an overcharge up there as the Phoenix looped around. Ah, this is... Uh, th th this is interesting. I mean, Neb will get some damage done here. Picking away way more probes once again. Meanwhile, though, an Adept... We'll get a couple of kills at the third base. We'll force some lost man in. I mean, Showtime has to take what he can get right now. He's going to go up and right. And as he goes up and right, he's going to see that the Phoenix are not going to continue to build here from Neeb. And knowing that, he'll be able to cut his own Phoenix production if he feels like he's got enough. Eight against seven is the advantage. One more might not hurt just to make sure of it. As again, Showtime slowly mining away from that third base top side. Slowly freezing the probes up there. And again, a lot of these Phoenix coming down to the south. The third Nexus is going to throw down as well from Showtime. Uh, sorry, a fourth Nexus, but it's like the actual third Nexus. That's why I'm getting confused, of course. Um, it's in the third location, as we see. Showtime does have more Phoenix, and he actually will pick up one there. So he's kind of winning the Phoenix War, but what can you do when the Phoenix actually win the Phoenix War? Well, actually, it's maybe a bit better than it seems. You can lift up a lot of units, and you know, during a fight, you can pick up multiple Immortals, etc. That's always powerful. Let's be cautious, though. He's getting cornered in a little bit right now. Blink on the way up still here. Plus one as well. I mean, that's the thing. Neve just has so many tech advantages in this game. There's a reason you know, income is important. He's got this income lead. It's turned into an army lead. And again, he's also got Blink. He's also got plus one on the ground. So even if Showtime has these Phoenix, are they really going to be able to make that much of a difference? Well, let's see. Neve gives up on these right now. Just says, well, instead of making... Bless me. Oh my god. We're dying. We are dying. Um, yeah, instead of kind of making more, um, well, uh, more Phoenix is just going to be like, okay, just let these die, not worry about them. As we'll see now, Showtime can utilize his lifts on probes, he'll get some damage done, he's going to even up the work account. I mean, he's mining up here, he's essentially going to be on four bases shortly. Obviously, um, oh, nice little feedback from the off guy, high time blow over there. We've seen these uh, Phoenix coming through, and even more probes going down. Showtime actually going to take a work lead, but again... How does he kill this army? How does he, uh, you know, how does he deal with this? Is going to be seeing these adepts moving forwards. There's a disruptor out. I mean, you got to hope for like the disruptor shot from heaven, but well, it has one of them. Adepts go down. Showtime. Triple overcharge. He's got another disruptor shot available. He's been very patient with it. Very patient indeed. Still setting up with this. A few more stalkers coming through. Plus two attack though. I mean, that's why you really do rely on these disruptors because they don't care about upgrades. Two more force fields. And they obviously can't blink through the force fields. Blink through the force fields, guess what happens? You get disrupted. And disruptor shot being used. Showtime's still expanding to the top left hand side. Taking a fourth base. Stalker's pushing in again. Again, Showtime's so patient at the moment with the disruptor fires. And that's so important because he needs to kind of keep enough of them alive, I think. You know, if he, if he fires away too casually, he's just going to get attacked in. And that's going to be problematic as we're going to see here. Again, good trades from Showtime. 
And in a way, I can't quite believe what we're starting to see. I mean, yes, I know he's without Blink, he's without the upgrades, and that means in the overall Stalker War he's in a lot of trouble. But man, I mean, Neve doesn't have Disruptors yet, you know? So the dream is somewhat alive for Showtime fans in this game than before. I mean, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying he's going to come back and win the games yet, but I mean, it's possible, you know? He's got his opportunities, he's got his ways now. He's got the, you know, there's a clear way that he could come back in this game rather than five minutes ago where it was just like, oh my god, Showtime, you're so far behind. I mean, this Nexus up here is paid off. He's got this one here to transfer workers to. Disruptor shot into the center of the stalk as he target fires it down. This time, another couple he has to blink away. And that was a bit more panic there from Showtime. But he had to fire a couple of disruptor shots if he was ever going to force that blink back. If you fire one at a time, the stalkers on top of your disruptors, they'll just target fire them down one, then the other, then the other. At some point here, Neeb is probably going to realize the fact that Showtime is not just on two bases. You know, when he starts to realize the fact that somehow he's still mining, and maybe even that's what that hallucinated phoenix is already looking to get set to do. Scout the external bases. Yeah, Uneeb is realizing, like, I've got you pinned into two bases. How, you know, how, how are you still building stuff? You know, wh what am I missing? And again, obviously a hidden base is the most obvious answer. And so Neeb just going to start scouting around for that, trying to figure it out. And, well, this is where Showtime does run into some issues, right? Because very shortly here, he's going to have to defend the top side base. He's actually warping in the depths there. He's actually going to come in and harass his opponent's fourth base. So this base scouted. I mean, the thing is, though, Neep has the has the money, right, to just sort of send units forwards here. Showtime has 75 probes. So many of them not doing anything. They're oversaturated on this natural because they can't just transfer up here very easily. He could actually recall them up there with the Mothership Core. I actually think that's what he already did with this... Uh, well, maybe not, actually. He's been using a lot of his overcharges, right? Hmm, this is difficult. We see Showtime obviously responding to the fact his opponent knows about this base now with uh, a depth production of his own up there. Again, the Stalker trades are difficult for Showtime to take because he's oh, close up his own Stalker. Because he is so far down on upgrades, so that's very painful for him. It also means the Adept trades also are going to be difficult. Still pushing forwards. Just going to be seeing these Adepts still trade now to the top side. Disruptor hits a Disruptor of Neeb. I mean, that's nice. That's something, right? Stalkers will blink backwards, actually blinking into the Disruptor shot, though. And there's 14 probes of Showtime going down. I mean, he will clean this up up here, continue to warp in. Neeb still keeping pressure at the front. Keeping on a lot of pressure at, at the front. Even if he doesn't win this game, he's got to be getting into Neeb's head like, Dude, I was so dead and he still can't kill me? Like, come on, man. Like... What's taking you 10 minutes to end this game where you are so far up in? It's been really crazy so far. Plus free attack from Neeb. Continue to come on through, by the way. It's going to be another upgrade for him, which is just going to be, again, beneficial. We see Resonating Glaives also coming down. Disruptor Shot Fires doesn't really connect on much. Stalkers continue to uh, come through the south as well. Up north, uh, well, this army from uh, Neeb and Showtime are going to clash again. The upgrades from Neeb really will just make this kind of so favorable, though, and... He's going to be seeing still this trade continue on. Overcharge coming down. Suddenly the uh, all the probes are up here. Mothership core as well. Throws down an overcharge and maybe Neeb isn't quite expecting that disruptor shot. Nearly reaching the disruptors of his opponent. Stalkers will blink back there just about in time. So many Stalkers of Neeb and eventually he's going to run through this base. And as he runs through this base, that's actually kind of huge. Probes will pull in. Showtime still trying to defend that position. Stalkers over here. Well, that's actually the disruptors. Which have the trade. The disruptor does go down for me, but it takes two with it. And the trades continue on. Showtime still has this base top left. Like, I mean, Neeb doesn't know about that one, eh? Doesn't know about that one just yet. Does Oh my god! He kills the disruptor that's about to kill everything. Somehow, Showtime is still just about fighting in this one. He has plus one now, so he keeps it at only a plus two upgrade lead. Another Nexus down to the bottom side here. Guys, can you believe that these guys are going to go to another five-game PvP series? They're just so good against each other. They really are. Here we go. These units moving forward. The Disruptors. Oh, no. This isn't good. A bit of a desperation move from Showtime across the map. A little bit less patient than he's been showing in recent times. And now he's also losing the base. The fight up to the north. And this might very well be the beginning of the end. Stalkers still trading, blinking around at each other at the top side. <laughs> Again, I mean, the upgrades continue to just help Neeb so, so much. So even when he's outnumbered, it's going way better for him. GG, Showtime taps out of what has been incredible. Go to the toilet and run back.
Phew. Phew, phew, phew. What's up, guys? Game 5. Tell your friends. Tell everybody. Let's see if we can hit 3k viewers for this series. It deserves it. As we do have to the bottom left-hand side. The yellow Protoss player. Give it up for Neeb. Neeb, 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 Neeb. Top right, red Protoss from Armor Team. It is showtime. Winner of this plays Gumiho in the finals. Best of seven. Winner starts 1-0 up. How are we all doing in the chat? Are we feeling good? I want to hear it right now then. This is it. Game five. One of these players goes to the finals. Which is it? I want to hear from you guys. Is it Neeb? Is it Showtime? Let me know. If you don't let me know, then you clearly don't care about the player cheering for and you'll just literally... Killing their esports streams because they need your support. Let us know who you're cheering on, guys. Proxima is a weird one to end on on um, for PvP a little bit because obviously it can go super long, super late, but it can create some weird openings. E.g., Showtime, Nexus first versus Neeb. Well, just one gate expanding. You do only need one gateway here on this map to be able to expand because it's not like the other maps which has like you know it has an in-base natural basically so you can get away for one gate expand with a full wall and all the rest of it as well guys guys thanks so much for joining me we're 10 hours into this stream right now i really didn't think today was going to be a 12 hour stream but considering we still have a best of seven final to cast it very well maybe so it looks as though we might be heading towards our third 12 hour day in a row so if i do start to go a little bit crazy and start to talk some nonsense and say things that just are completely completely not true and using the wrong words you know who to blame flotch comes in with the four month resub says shit four months already holy titties thank you very much for the four months dude can we get some love in the chat thank you so much for the support appreciate it man and things gaming sadly flotch he's just one up to you mate Half a year with the six month free sub. Enjoy your brand new fresh sub badge. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys. Let's see some love in the chat for the resubs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As we do see this uh, another ship call coming in towards the uh, natural expansion. Get a little bit of damage here and there, and just picking off a couple of probes is nice just to try and, uh, you know, slow things down of the Nexus first in player. What was the name of the song that just played? It was called Sha La 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 by Heavy Young Heathens. Or you can check the last FM. Also, probably just as easy. I'll give you the link in the chat for that. Just typed it in. Obviously, but I'm two minutes in the future, so you had it two minutes in the past. <gasps> Time travel! What? Set guitars to kill! Four month free sub as well! Neeb and Showtime are always a pleasure to watch play each other. Thank you for the four months. Look at the resub train. We just had a Twitch Prime sub train. Now we've got a resub train. What is going on? Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at you guys cheering people on. Neeb time says Murpha. Things Gaming says go Neeb. Showtime says Hero Kikun. Neeb says Dankly. Karen cheers on Gummy Hook. No, Karen, you don't get the point of cheering on the players in this game. Oh my god. You guys are going crazy. Guys, this game is getting interesting because double Stargate from Showtime already. Against what has just been a Robo Twilight from Neeb. So, a little bit of a strange one here in game 5. Right from the get-go, so far, Neeb a player knowing what is in the other's base. And Showtime just stacking up those Phoenix. And now he's going to start going across the map. Robo behind this. He's going to be going up against Blink finishing pretty shortly here from Neeb, though. Wow, you're really, uh, you guys are really going at it. Mech is beautiful with lots of Showtimes. Just a young Kappa cheering on Neeb. USA is in the chat as well. Oh, you guys really, really went for the, uh, <laughs> really went for the cheering. I didn't think you were going to respond so well. What's up, Jesse? How you doing, mate? Thanks for the, uh, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Go, Wardy. <laughs> you don't need to cheer me on, man. We got the, I've got the games to power me up. Voidry on the way from Showtime to follow this up into a robo facility. And I guess it's just a kind of a bit of a different way to set up into sight. Kind of what Neeb has been doing throughout so far. Stalkers do some good damage over here and picking away at those Phoenix so far. Third Nexus drops on down from Neeb and Showtime will not be too far behind already again in position. He actually has the minerals to do it already as well. 
So again, the Phoenix squad not doing too much actually. A couple probes lost by Showtime. The fact that Phoenix haven't killed anything is somewhat surprising, honestly. Both the Blink and Stalkers up already. Neeb did have a quite, quite an initially nice counter against this, I suppose. As now again the Void Raid production begins, the Immortals are coming out also, the Forge is dropping on down. And we see those Phoenix continue to the south side of the map. Looking to see what else these Phoenix can get up to, Think about going in towards the main, maybe pick up a couple of probes if possible. Any damage is good damage for these Phoenix because you're trading energy for units usually. Look at the Stalker position from Neeb though. He's in such a good position all over the place and he is not going to let a single thing go down here. Is now going to be running up the left hand side, and as he runs up the left hand side, we're just going to be seeing the uh, plus one air weapons of Showtime coming on through as well. It's double Stargate from Neeb. So he's going to come in with a double Stargate right now as well. Also, kind of exciting as we see. Again, these uh, Phoenix is going to be um, pushed away. Probably going down this time around, but he just lose a Phoenix, right? Loses one. What does Neeb build from the Stargates? Let's find out. <laughs> Easy to see. Thank you very much, Labe, for another 4 month free sub. Wow, look at all these 4 month free subs. God damn it, Things Game, and you, ru you ruined the 4 month free sub train. You got in right there in the middle of it, didn't you? <laughs> Thank you for the 4 months, Labe. Says Neeb as he resubs. That's a good way to cheer, isn't it? Cheer on your player. And then these few Phoenix looking to see what's up. Stalkers trying to do a little bit here and there. Neeb just going to throw down a third Stargate, man. He's just going to go into the late game Sky Toss right from the get go with the Fleet Beacon coming down also. He's just going to go straight to Carriers. Fleet Beacon comes down from Showtime across the map. I don't know if he's going to go straight to Carriers or whatever. I guess we're going to find out. The thing is, Showtime will have the plus one air weapon advantage right away. Right, 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 right away. These uh, Phoenix just still moving on through and looking to see what's up. That next is again to the left hand side. Thank you, Jesse, for the sub. Appreciate it, bro. Season love in the chat for that one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, guys. Gotta, gotta focus up. As you just see again, the uh, voids and mortals. Couple of stalkers looking to see what else is going on as well. Still trying to push around the front here. I mean, it's very passive from both players. It's Proxima Station. What do you expect? Do you expect them to go all out and all in each other? No, probably not. I mean, it was interesting seeing these Phoenix, but Neeb defended it pretty perfectly. And you can see now Showtime's struggling to find anything more of this still. Phoenix coming up to the top side of the map again. Over here, Void Rays and Mortals, a couple Stalkers. Setting themselves up, looking to see what will happen. And as the just move through these rocks, opening up the middle of the map, opening up the possibility to move in towards that gold base. And then Graviton Catapult is coming on down. We're going to be seeing. And the carriers obviously going to get set up here. Whoa, some Phoenix get shot down. I mean, as the game goes on, of course, it's not going to be quite as. Um, quite as crucial, crucial, quite as important to have those Phoenix. They're not going to do as much. Obviously, you don't want to just throw them away. You want to try and find value. Ideally, probes are like the easiest thing to get. So we'll see if you can find something. Revelation drops on the Void Rays in the back there. As both players heading towards carriers. Again, Showtime is a bit slow getting started on the carrier production. But he's uh, not too far behind. The third Stargate follow -up fire coming down for him too. He'll be the first to take the gold base in the center. And well, obviously, he's got the Void Rays to help out on the ground. Sh uh, Neeb does have a lot of Stalkers. That will help a little bit. He does have plus two for the Stalkers, and with that plus two, of course, he's going to be able to do quite a lot of damage uh, to kind of the carries, etc., if it comes to it. So that's quite nice to have, but then again, arguably, also being ahead of air upgrade, it's going to be quite important too. And having the Void Rays will also do a lot of damage, which is going to be pretty sick. Thank you very much, Artemis73, for the sub as well. Oh my god, so many subs coming through, guys. Thank you so much for all the support. You guys are awesome. I'll give you all proper shouts later. If you do just subscribe, by the way, I know you may not want to refresh the stream, but if you refresh, then you get to kind of send a message with your new sub. It's kind of weird because you don't show on the events list either until you send the message sub, which comes up like after you refresh in the top of the chat or something. So it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit weird. So in case I miss someone subbing because it doesn't show up on my events list or dashboard until you do that, that is why. Because chat is moving pretty fast. Six Eye Temple is on the way up. 
And we are just going to be seeing the uh, plus one air weapons also starting up on the Cybernex core. Well, finishing up for Neeb. We just set up in towards the center of this map. It's, I mean, it, it wouldn't be a Neep Showtime series if it didn't finish up on this massive late game Sky Toss army, would it, in game 5 of the best of 5? It just wouldn't. I know we're not proper Sky Toss just yet. There's actually four more carries about apart from Showtime. Neeb has just stopped at four. He's got Archons, though. I feel those Archons could do a lot. Splash damage onto the Void Rays. Help to take down the Interceptors nice and quickly. This could be pretty huge. Again, those Interceptors fighting away with each other. Find a way, we see those cannons coming on up, tanking some damage, the voids get ready to go, they're starting to do some work. We actually see the interceptors of Need have disappeared almost instantly here. How long until Showtime has more carriers? Six seconds, some of them are already arriving at the front. Both players are more or less out of interceptors, there's the prismatic alignment from Showtime, overcharges are being popped as well. Voids pulling further back, blink forwards, voids not going to get the most out of their prismatic alignment at all right now. As we see those... <laughs> Interceptors continuing to pick away, continuing to do some more bits and pieces of damage here. Oh no, and Show her knee sort of moves down into these cannons though. Showtime still has a lot, he's just maybe waiting for more interceptors to come up, his extra carriers to finish. He's got another one in a second. Now he doesn't have any more carriers for a while, so now it might be worth him committing in towards this fight. The mothership is gonna go down for Neeb. Thing is, Neeb has so much money in the bank. Can Showtime take a fight to justify not having to rebuild? He's gonna have to kill a lot very efficiently. To kind of uh, set this up. His bottom right base as well, Showtime, under attack momentarily. Need behind all of this with the Warp Prism play. Again, just trying to buy time to rebuild some interceptors, it would seem. Fires forwards, picks off an Archon instantly. Oh my god, Voids are going to be off a of Prismatic Alignment cooldown too. So now as they push forwards, they're going to look to just fight everything once again. Carriers are being chased already. Need will lose his carriers. So suddenly Showtime has the army supply advantage and you know what, a minute and 20 seconds to rebuild a carrier? Well that's going to be very difficult for, to kind of hold off on for, uh, you know, how long does Neve have? Like, not long at all. In fact, I don't think Neve has time to rebuild carriers. Mothership will come in and will cloak this base. 28 workers lost, Showtime has way less income now, way less economy, but he's got a huge army in comparison. But he's not pushing it. He's not going to go and try and do something with this at all. So we are going to be seeing this, uh, this uh, couple of units just moving on forwards. You can see these uh, young carriers throwing down some damage onto the stalkers right there. And some more probes going down actually as Neeb in the middle line over here. I mean harassment and buying time is what he has to do right now and it's exactly what he is doing. Again, Showtime, his economy, oh my god, his economy is appearing but he picks off all these stalkers as well. Oh man, Neeb's army is nowhere near really in a position to fight any longer. Is this the time Showtime gets rid of Neeb in a best of five series? I mean, he did it last week in the Corsair Cup Finals. But obviously this is a bit of a bigger tournament to $1,600 to be won per player here today. Again, right now you've got 500 in the bank. Win this, you've got 900 in the bank. Win the finals, you've got 1600 Showtime, again, his income is non-existent, and Neeb has a lot, and he is spending that money. Problem is, though, he's still not going to have as many carriers as Showtime is. There's still voids in the sky as well, and oh, Showtime's army was on track to go and uh, take down this base. This uh, carrier, slowly picking away at these stalkers. Don't know if Showtime is just being a bit too defensive right now, a little bit too afraid of continuing to push on into this. Because it feels as though he's got enough to push on. It feels as though he should get in, get up close and personal, kill this Nexus and keep on fighting. But he wants to keep his bases alive. He's obviously trying to rebuild workers himself too. Plus three air weapons against plus two. He's also got plus one armor and plus one shield. The benefit of committing into air from the very early stages compared to what Neeb did, which was going to some gateway production and then switch into carriers right away. Can Neeb win a fight? Well, now Neeb is the one starting to mass up cannons. Now it's Showtime who's starting to push across the map into position to trade. What does Showtime do? Is he going to play it safe? Is he going to go just take down the fourth? But then he's in a bit of a corner. But then again, he's got an air army, right? With the air army, obviously, it's, uh, you know, he can, you know, he can fly over rocks, believe it or not. How broken is that? Carriers can fly over rocks? Are you kidding me? Madness. Absolute madness. Zealot's being chased away there. Looks as though Showtime is happy to just sort of commit in. He'll deal with the Zealots with his reinforcing warpins. 
But she'll have kind of space to kind of build because he's looking for the fight. Pushing forwards here, then a few units of Neeb stuck out front. We see Carrier's just being targeted down so quickly they're disappearing. Neeb is just gonna GG away. Showtime does it! Man, these guys went head to head twice today. This is the second best of five they played. This is the second time they went to all five games.